most terrifying dreams for me was a dream of me being on a basketball court, stadium's full, and I'm attacking the basket, and I can't get off the ground. I can't jump, like I'm, I'm stuck, like I'm cemented to the floor. I was conscious of the fact that I was dreaming. So now I'm trying to control my dream. You can jump through it, you can push through it, you can get to that basket. And no matter how hard I tried, my legs were too heavy. Can't jump. Um, to, to reach a certain level of success in any field that you're in, you have to have an, an ego that's gonna say, I wanna be the best. This is what's gonna drive me and come hell or high water, this needs to get done and I need to be successful. And it's, a, it's a choice that you have to make. I wanna be the best, simple and plain. But to be the best, you have to win. And that's why I play the game. You know, that's what drives me. I take you to this scene. 20 seconds left to go. You're down by one. You want the ball. You want to take the last shot. Absolutely. I'm not afraid to fail. And I, I just love it. It's, it's, it's just an adrenaline rush. Everybody in the crowd stands up and everybody's waiting to see if you're going to make the shot, if you're going to lose the game, or you're going to win the game. It's, it's just an unbelievable rush. <laughs> and I've always had some of my best performances on the road. You know, when fans boo, I absolutely love it. I thrive on it. They don't understand who I am. Not only am I comfortable being an outsider, that has become a source of motivation for me. So when I go to these places and you boo, it actually comforts me. <laughs> yeah. How do you just focus on day to day and not think and not have these lofty goals and aspirations considering the fact that you've already been to the promised land not once, not twice, but three times, Kobe? You know, it was, uh, the, tough, the toughest thing about that is about, you know, once you, you know, fortunate enough to win three championships, you're at the top of the mountain. And all of a sudden, you know, you're back, you're rebuilding now. So now you're, you're all the way down at the bottom, you know, and you're looking back up at this mountain that you guys just climbed, and it's a hell of a mountain. And you have to start from the bottom again and try to crawl back up to the top. It's tough. I mean, it, it's mentally and emotionally draining. Um, but, you know, here we are now. We're, we're getting up that mountain a little bit and uh, starting to look very bright. But, you know, once you taste that champagne one time and how much it burns when it gets in your eyes, you, you, know, you want that feeling again. That they feel that, uh, you, you know, you're ment mentally whipped. Mm -hmm. That you've lost that edge. <laughs> no. No, we we'll never, never stop fighting. But you're looking over here. Never. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the Lakers you know, uniform that you guys have in the background. I'm just thinking about uh, the tradition, thinking about all the great players that came through this Laker organization, and that's just not going to happen. That's just not going to happen. Nobody's going to stop fighting. I mean, if you look at everything that we've been through as a team, uh, you know, people getting traded, you know, rumors, Dennis coming in, and all this stuff going coach on. Coach being fired. Coach being fired. Uh, and yet, we're still in the hunt. We're still there. Uh, I think that shows a lot of character. So, you know, we are a little mentally drained. I think who wouldn't be going through all of this stuff and being such a young team, but you know, we're going to keep fighting. Because I notice sometimes you look back at the defender to watch their expression. What's that like? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, you get the feeling from the defenders where it's like, oh, man, no, just can't not. <laughs> not tonight, you know, sort of thing. And, um, and I thrive off of that. You love that, don't you? Oh, yeah. You love that, like, defeated look? Yeah, oh, absolutely. The challenge was not only to win one, but it was to win multiple ones. And to be able to sit at the same lunch table with my muses, Michael, Magic. I want to be able to sit down at the same table with them and belong there. And uh, I'm very proud to be able to say I can do that. Where did you get your killer instinct from? Well, yeah, I think a lot of it um, had to do with um, isolation. You know, growing up over there and being the only uh, African-American kid. 
not being able to speak the language, I gravitated towards the game. And in that game, you find a lot of, um, um, you find solace in the game. And then when you play with kids that you know, might not uh, accept you because you're an outsider, uh, but yet when we come to play the game, that's my chance to, to, to get vengeance on them for not accepting me in the and that's where it kind of started developing. And, and throughout the course of my life, it's always been that. It's always been the outsider and having to come in and prove, you know, or, or to seek some sort of vengeance when I play. The Los Angeles Lakers have captured their second straight world championship. The only goal is to try to win another championship. And every year has a different journey and you just kind of got to find your way through it. You're 22 years old, you've won two of these. Does this mean more than the first one? <laughs> the first one is always is always very special because you're proving to people that you can do it. The second one is like it's, you're proving that it's not a it's not a fluke. You know, these series against San Antonio, two champions going head up and uh, winning back to back definitely feels great. I mean, I had a year um, of playing. Like when I played basketball in Italy, I was taller than everybody else and faster, um, like the age of 11. Right? And I came back to America to play basketball, and it was not the same thing because kids were bigger, stronger. And so I went through a summer of playing basketball in America where I didn't score one point. Mm -hmm. It was one league, I didn't score one point. And uh, it was devastating. Um, but I had to, no, I'm not giving up. It's not gonna happen. So you bounce back and you keep playing, you keep practicing, you keep practicing. But I mean, it wasn't handed to me. You didn't score one point. Not one, I mean, not even a free throw. And you were zero. You were how old? 11. 11. Were you playing against 25 year olds? No, I was playing against 11 year olds. <laughs> no, I was playing against 11 That's year olds. That's hard to believe. Wow. I know, I know. But I was playing against 11 year olds and I didn't score one point. And then was, was that, did that, uh, did it hurt you? Were you, were you? Well, yeah, it was very embarrassing because, you know, my father was a Philadelphia basketball legend. Mm -hmm. My uncle was a Philadelphia basketball legend. Mm -hmm. And now here I am, this kid with like these really big knee pads and I'm walking around and I can't score anything. So it was like really embarrassing. Uh -huh. That and drove you? Of course it did. You've lost the last two times you've been in the finals, the, the fact that there's been a gap. Is, is that created this more intense hunger that we detect from you right yeah, now? Yeah, it's a bit of everything. It's a bit of everything. It's a lot of motivation. A lot of motivation. And, uh, you know, I'm using it all right now. Did, did beating the Celtics feel better than beating Orlando? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I grew up such a Lakers <laughs> fan, and so, like, the Lakers and Celtics rivalry. You just hate them. Everything, yeah. Oh, like, you hate them. We can't. There's just no way I can be on a team, on a Lakers team, that loses to the Celtics twice. No. You know, <laughs> you know having five, I mean, we joke about that a lot, but the most important thing was beating the Celtics because of everything that they've meant to this organization. And it was a tough series for me. Most people don't know this, but I had a bone spur in my ankle. And then... Uh, couple games in Boston, I had to leave the game, go back in the locker room and get it injected because I could barely walk. And I had a broken finger that I was playing with, I had a cast on my right finger. And having to try to figure out how to get through that series. And so first and foremost, it was a relief to win and get out of that series alive. If I lost two to the Celtics, man, I'd, I'd been miserable. He hates it. But we, we lost to the Celtics in 08. And it was a physical series. I mean, they beat the crap out of us. Yeah. And so we go into the <laughs> Olympic year that year. Yeah. We wound up playing Spain for the gold medal match, and we beat them. Uh -huh. And so now we come back to start training camp, and my pal shows up the first day of, of training camp. I have my gold medal hanging in his locker. Oh, no. And he, <laughs> I mean, like, the one thing that he truly, truly loves is his country. Of course. Like, that is, like, everything to him. So it just drove him crazy. Oh, and I said, gosh. pal, listen. He said, you're an asshole. I said, listen, pal. You lost to the Celtics. You lost to us in a gold medal match. Let's not make this three in a row this year. Wow. Okay? <laughs> that is Let's brilliant. win this thing. <laughs> and that was, that was it for him. Uh, what's going on? Why are you playing so many minutes? At this point in time of the season, I really don't have much of an, much of an option, much of a choice. I mean, this is a uh, do or die time for us now. And you know, we're still, you know, Steve going down the injury, I think, really, um, you know, puts more pressure on me to be out there and uh, playing the majority of the game and playmaking and scoring and doing things of that nature. That she saw me work so hard for so many years. And the last few years, um, her and Rob, who was at the time my agent, um, 
called me and said, listen, we are so sorry for what happened to this team. We're sorry that we don't have, seriously, it's like we don't, we're sorry we don't have a team around you that can contend for a championship. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's um, so we can make a few calls and get you on a contending team. Uh, if that's something, because we just feel horrible about seeing you going out there and struggle. Remember this? And, and I said, then I listened. I said, you know, we've known each other for a very long time. I'm, now I'm questioning myself because I'm wondering what about me makes you think I would jump ship? <laughs> we don't do that. Because you know, we don't do that. Mama mentality is it's a it's a way of life. It's not an attitude per se, but it's a way to live. It's just trying to get better every single day. It's not something where you you know you live with like a bravado or anything like that. It's just it's just the simplest form of just trying to get better at whatever it is that you're doing. Yes, he's on fire. The I mean, he hit a couple of ridiculous shots. What's going through your mind in that game, in that moment, and right after the game too? Well, um, I said, well, I just got to free myself, get open, and make one shot. You know, that's all I kept saying to myself. Just make one shot. You, I mean, you've made thousands and thousands of shots. Just make one. So I make one, and now you, you get the ball back, and you have yourself in, a, in the same situation. You're like, okay, just make one. <laughs> and then you just keep getting closer and closer.